I'm Jenny Fike and I am talking to you from British Columbia, Vancouver Island area. Uh, so I'm going to address uh, one of the questions that I was asked first and um, that was the one about what path I followed after graduating from uh, Cameron Heights Collegiate Institute in, uh, in 1973. And that was the year that I finished grade 13. Um, and grade 13 actually proved to be extremely important uh, as I was able to, when I uh, went to the University of Calgary, um, take uh, classes in geography um, that were actually third and fourth year classes. I was allowed to, to skip um, the first and second year classes because of the excellent geography grade 13 program. Um, so in Cameron Heights, um, I, uh, I was able to um, obtain the, uh, the highest mark in the school actually for geography. So that was probably one of the other reasons why the uh, University of Calgary let me take those advanced classes. And those classes turned out to be extremely important uh, because through them I met other individuals and uh, they helped me with my career path. Um, I actually was uh, majoring in environmental biology. Um, I got um, second highest mark in biology in, in uh, Cameron Heights the year that I graduated. And, um, and together biology and geography were a really good combination for leading to an, um, a career in the environmental management field. Um, so the, the people I met, um, they, uh, Cliff White was one of them, and uh, he was extremely interested in this notion of a Great Divide Trail. And, uh, but he didn't know how to fund this idea of trying to figure out where to put the Great Divide Trail uh, in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains. And so I had, uh, in Cameron Heights, been involved uh, in initiating the Conscience Recycling Club, uh, which ended up growing and uh, eventually becoming the Blue Box program across Canada. And one of the successes that we had early on, in addition to getting tremendous support from our teachers and uh, uh, family members and community members, was we obtained an Opportunities for Youth grant, which was a federal government grant created by Pierre Elliott Trudeau um, in, uh, in the 1970s. And so um, I suggested to Cliff that a way to fund his idea would be to apply for an Opportunities for Youth grant, which we did, and, uh, and we were successful in, in getting that. So we did this project called Project Great Divide Trails, and we surveyed trails on either side of the Continental Divide, uh, which forms the boundary between British Columbia and Alberta. And we went from the northern edge of Waterton Lakes National Park to the southern edge of Banff National Park, and then in the Crown Forest land on either side uh, in BC and Alberta. And we, in addition to doing the inventory, we plotted out routes, uh, potential routes for the Great Divide Trail. At the end of that summer, uh, uh, Cliff went to school actually in the States and um, my boyfriend uh, Dave Higgins and another person on the Project Great Divide Trails team, Mary Jane Cox, she and um, Dave and I worked to form the Great Divide Trail Association. And Dave and I had already had experience with, great, with trails and as we were on the first board of directors, even though we were in high school, um, for the um, Grand Valley Trail Association in Kitchener-Waterloo. And we had experience with the Bruce Trail as well. And both of these stemmed from uh, Dave being uh, uh, the leader of the Outdoors Club at Cl Cameron Heights uh, Collegiate Institute. So uh, that spawned a real interest in trails and outdoor pursuits and outdoor activities. And um, so we gathered that experience together and put it into building the Great Divide Trail Association. And that experience of being on boards and working in volunteer organizations really helped me when I applied for a job with Parks Canada uh, to work as a park naturalist. And so I was successful in getting a park naturalist job in Mount Revelstoke and Glacier National Parks in British Columbia in 1976. And that led to um, a fairly long career with, the, uh, with national parks, working right from British Columbia all the way out to Newfoundland in Terranova National Park. <clears throat> 
So I initially began as a park naturalist and then got into um, planning as well as supervisory positions and management positions in Parks Canada. And that lasted until Paul Martin became the finance minister and, um, and eventually the, the prime minister. Uh, at which time Parks Canada was cut by 50%. And um, so the whole interpretation function was being um, eliminated pretty much in Western Canada and the national parks and national historic parks. Um, at that time I was um, working in Calgary at the regional office there, um, overseeing all of the interpretive programs, environmental education programs, extension, uh, cooperative activities, volunteer programs for national parks and national historic parks. And um, so anyway, that was eliminated and uh, I was actually um, kind of foreseeing this uh, and being somewhat uh, resilient and needing to, uh, to adapt. I had um, gone back to university and I was doing my master's in environmental science and um, a PhD in geography. Um, and that, um, because my job was eliminated, that um, uh, gave me what I needed in order to go to the next stage of my career, which was uh, a job with the BC Ministry of Environment as the manager of habitat protection. Um, so after I got my PhD, uh, I moved to Victoria on Vancouver Island and um, began work in that job. And I did a series of different uh, posi management positions for the BC government. Um, uh, manager of terrestrial ecosystem science and uh, climate change adaptation, stewardship outreach, and I ended up um, retiring from a position as manager of environmental policy. Um, so all of the academic work that I did in, in high school actually provided a really good foundation for that path. Um, and um, I'll tell you a little bit more uh, in a moment with uh, um, the answer to the second question about, about that. Yeah, uh, so the second question that I'm going to address is the one, uh, what did Cameron Heights Collegiate Institute instill in you that still resonates today? Um, so number one, I would say is lifelong learning and uh, a real interest, especially in science um, and the life sciences, environmental sciences. Um, and that's something that has stuck with me right from uh, the time that I was taking um, classes at the University of Calgary, or University, sorry, at uh, Cameron Heights. And, uh, and then that carried on to the University of Calgary uh, work that I, I did in my undergrad degree. Um, one of the things that happened was, um, uh, Miss Stevens, I had outstanding teachers at CHCI. Uh, Miss Stevens chose me as the representative for um, Cameron Heights to attend the first Earth Day celebrations in on April 22nd, 1970. And that involved a great big celebration up at uh, the University of Waterloo. And I was exposed to so many things. At, at the time I was going to become a veterinarian and I thought, why well, save a few cats and dogs when I could save the world? Um, and so I joined Pollution Probe, I joined the uh, Kitchener-Waterloo Field Naturalists, uh, I joined the Outdoors Club, all kinds of things um, resulted from that uh, very first experience with the Earth Day event. And that uh, caring about the environment and working in a career in environmental management uh, continued with me for my whole life. Um, I also, in CHCI became very interested in geography and history, world politics, uh, English, um, even different languages, French um, and, uh, and Latin. And all of those things really helped me with, with my career. Uh, French, I ended up being able to apply for and get bilingual positions within the federal government in Parks Canada because I had a really good foundation in French from high school. Uh, Latin, which a lot of people said, why are you taking Latin? It's a dead language, it's useless. But when you're in the sciences, it's incredibly important, especially in the life sciences, because all of the scientific nomenclature for species is in Latin. Uh, and in addition, Latin helped understand uh, new words in English, uh, as well as helped with learning French and Spanish later on. Um, the One of the other things that stuck with me, besides a lifelong learning and, and uh, 
uh, an interest in science and all of these other um, subjects is um, rather than complain, it's best to take action and to try to improve things, make the world a better place. And I really learned that from the work in Conscience, the Conscience Recycling Club. Um, it also showed the power of individuals, uh, the power of one, and um, just this, this incredible uh, confidence one gets in, uh, in being able to do something to improve the world. Um, but also, we did a number of protests in, in the school, um, and even those showed, uh, showed me that it's better to try to make things better uh, rather than just complain. And, and I still believe in that. Um, I also learned from CHCI that it's who you are and what you do that is more important than how much you make uh, and all the stuff that you have. Uh, and I, I, it was a stark contrast to me uh, from another school that I had gone to uh, for grade nine, where the emphasis was definitely on how much money your parents made and how many clothes you had and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and and when Columbia, uh, Cameron Heights Collegiate Institute opened, and I was in the first year that it opened, um, they, uh, they, the people were just working class people and everybody got along and there wasn't all of this uh, fuss about um, money, basically. So that was a good, good experience. Um, one of the other things was uh, a love of outdoor recreation and uh, specifically hiking and camping, orienteering, um, canoeing, all of those things. And that was directly from the Outdoor Pursuits program, which was amazing um, and uh, an unforgettable and really useful experience where those of us who had good enough marks were able to just go up to uh, uh, the uh, uh, Huntsville area and uh, we were at Camp Wabanaki. A lot of our teachers came and they would teach in the morning the lessons and then in the afternoon we would do all of these incredible outdoor recreation activities, uh, inclu including leading the, the group in a canoe expedition and, and orienteering exercises. So that was that was really good experience that helped me with my work with the Great Divide Trail Association and with all of the work I did with Parks Canada as well. Um, and also, uh, I think CHCI really helped instill in me this idea of uh, you set goals and you achieve them, uh, which gives a certain degree of confidence, which is very positive. And, uh, and I'll end off on one that probably not a lot of people will think of or mention, but in terms of just life skills, I think CHCI had the best sex education ever um, because it was taught by a couple that was a married couple, both phys ed teachers, and uh, they really instilled this idea that sex is just a normal, healthy part of a, a good, strong, healthy relationship. Um, and the whole notion of being kind, um, being um, not doing any harm, and being responsible when it comes to sexuality. Uh, so they normalized it, they took away the, the kind of uh, taboo and um, and I think that, that that was a very helpful life skill. I've talked to many other people in other provinces who did not have any sex education or any positive sex education um, and uh, and I feel very grateful for the, uh, the positive sex education that um, Cameron Heights Collegiate Institute offered in the 1970s. Um, so there's probably a lot more in terms of wonderful things that I gained from, from high school. Um, but uh, that just gives a little bit of a taste in terms of what, uh, what benefited me. Thanks very much for, uh, for uh, doing this, uh, these legacies talks. They're a really good idea.